All right, next in our Big Ten season preview is the Washington Huskies, who made it all the way to the national championship game last year with a 14-1 and record, won the Pac-12 as well. Really magical year for the Huskies and probably the best in program history, honestly, Dalton, and one of the best, at least, in program history. Uh, made their first national championship game. But now... This is kind of a new era of Washington. Not only are they joining the Big Ten, new head coach, right? Kalen DeBoer left for the Alabama job. They bring in Jed Fish, who did a, who did a great job at, uh, at Arizona. The uh, star offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb, is also gone. He's now the Seattle Seahawks offensive coordinator, and they lost basically everybody from this team. So I understand the PFF power ranking has them number nine in the country. Don, I don't think we'd have them even close to number nine in the country. Uh, it, is, it is a brand new year for Washington. It kind of feels like, I hate to say it, it'll be a hangover, it feels like, from the uh, 2023 season. Yeah, very well could be. I mean, you got a, look, you have a national title run. There might be a hangover anyway. We saw from TCU last year, right? right. And, and they lost a boatload of talent. But I think if there's one thing to look to, if you're Jed Fish, you know, going into this situation – Back seven of your defense looks pretty good, and I'm actually really curious to see what defensive coordinator Steve Belichick has for them going in there. I think that's a really interesting storyline to see how he kind of makes his own mark first in college football. We'll see if he goes back to the NFL eventually anyway, but the back seven of their defense is a pretty good, well-rounded secondary still, even though they lost Jabbar Muhammad. Their linebacker duo of Carson Bruner and Alfonso Tupatala is really, really fun to watch. Like, there are some things for Belichick to work with on defense, which is something weird that we've said for a million years. But, you know, we'll see what – in Jed Fish, honestly, what he did offensively at Arizona last year, it really was kind of a showcase in development, right? Like, they did, they were going into the year expected to be like, how in the world are they going to score points? And by the end of the year, we're talking about Noah Fafita and Joel Coleman and Jacob Cowing and Tetsuro McMillan, like – found a way to do it, but first implementing the basics, right? And I think that's going to be the same strategy here. But to me, what's going to keep them in games is the back seven of this defense and whatever Steve Belichick has schematically going for them. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, Dolan, the biggest weakness is going to be this offense, a brand new offense. So one stat that I found, they had 32 players offensively and defensively that played 300 snaps last year. Only eight of them come back. So they lose 24 of those 32 players, and all eight of those players, Dolan, we're on defense. They don't bring any of the guys back on offense that played 300 snaps for them last year. So I understand it was one of the best offenses in the country, but they lost basically everything from that offense, including Michael Penix Jr., Roman Dunze, Troy Fautanu, all three of those guys' first-round picks. Um, and also, as well, Kalen DeMoor and Ryan Grubb, like I mentioned before, are gone too. Offensive masterminds. So, right, so there's a lot of questions offensively. They made some nice additions in the transfer portal. We'll get to it in a little bit. But uh, this unit won't be nearly as effective as it was, you know, over the last two years when they were one of the best offenses in college football. But one of those additions, Dalton, replacing Michael Penix Jr., top 10 pick at quarterback, is Will Rogers, right? The Mississippi State uh, transfer. What do we need to know about him as he heads into his first year as Washington's starting quarterback? Um, he's played a lot of football, right? That's that's first things first. Started for three years at Mississippi State. Been around a long time. Um, really just obviously unfortunate with the passing of Mike Leach. And last year, Rodgers was the one kind of left lost on the field from yeah. that, right? And, and they didn't have the air raid going like they did. They went to a little more traditional offense. And he struggled a lot last year, right? So... What you have is a guy who's trying to just readjust and find himself, and he plays well within structure. He doesn't have, like, big-time tools. He's got kind of just a decent arm. He doesn't run very much. But I think within, within the structure of Jed Fish's offense is where he can get comfortable, right? He doesn't do a lot out of structure. But, look, you have a guy who within structure, you know, in Mike Leach's offense, it was very, like, very defined, very, like, here are the concepts and take one step and make a quick decision and throw it, right? you've got a guy who can function, right? And in 2021, he had a 90 passing grade, and he was the most accurate quarterback in the country. Granted, that's a low average depth of target. And I actually, digging through some research, I found that he actually has the lowest average depth of target in PFF college history. <laughs> so certainly a more conservative passer, an accurate passer when he's on and his footwork is right and he's comfortable. I think he can do some things within the structure, very much like we saw when Noah Fafita first came in for Arizona last year under Fish. And the first, like, four or five games, when it was very, very structured and very much the play calling was kind of winning the battle before Fafita came into his own later in the season, I think it's going to be a similar process with Will Rogers here in that Fish can just coach. He can coach him through it. He can coach him through the bumps. He can get him easy throws to regain his confidence. The other thing he's got is the guy standing next to and behind him 
who is coming with fish from Arizona. That's Joe Coleman, man, at running back. Look, this dude is a monster, like just a just a big leg monster. Like you talk about yards after contact per attempt, you know, third best rushing grade in college football last season. He runs directly through people. He's as physical as any back in the country. Only five foot nine, but 225 pounds. This guy's a bowling ball. And you talk about leading the nation with 5.1 yards after contact per carry. He's going to keep the chains moving. And I think that's what this offense in its entirety, much like it was early in the year for Arizona, is what it's going to be about is just getting first downs. You're not going to see the big explosive 60 yard Penix to Odunze passes like you saw there last year. You're going to get Coleman for five yards. You're going to get Will Rogers for six or seven yards. And they're going to kind of just functionally work their way down the field. And if downfield opportunities present themselves, then they'll take them. But it's going to start with Rogers and Coleman just moving the chains. Yeah, absolutely. I love Jonah Coleman. He's a good receiver, too, and also a good pass blocker. He really does everything at a high level, so I'm a huge fan of Jonah Coleman's game. I mentioned before how the back seven of the defense is really the strength of this Washington team, and a big reason for that is Carson Bruner, uh, their star linebacker. 84.3 coverage grade over the last two years. That is second among Power 5 linebackers to only Jay Higgins from Iowa, who we consider to be one of the best linebackers in college football. Um, he was the fifth most valuable Power 5 linebacker this past season, according to our wins above average metric. Bruner's an elite athlete with the range that can keep up with tight ends and even some bigger slot receivers as well, really good range. Uh, I think he should have a bigger role in his senior season now with Edifuan uh, Olafoshio now in the NFL. Uh, I think Carson Bruner is certainly one of the top 15 or so linebackers that we have in college football uh, as of right now. But Dawn, bottom line time now. Obviously, it's been two great years for Washington, a great year in 2022, an even better one in 2023, making it all the way to the national title game and winning the Pac-12 what are we expecting here out of Washington? Are we expecting a hangover as severe as the 5-7 and seven that TCU had this past season, or do you think it would be a little bit better than that as they uh, make their way into the Big Ten? I think they could be better than that. I, I, I do think Will Rogers went to the right place getting with Jed Fish and kind of, again, working with a coach that, that keeps him within a lot of structure. But I, I, don't, I don't think they shouldn't expect to make a bowl game. I think even somewhere – Somewhere in the 7-8 win range is still what they should expect. And and honestly, Jed Fish knows how to coach a team up. Nobody, nobody expected Arizona to win 11 games last year, right? That was not in anybody's cards, and that was the thing that he got going as the season, you know, really got rolling, right? They took a couple losses early in the year. They were trying to figure things out. So, no, I think Washington, I think they're a competitive team. I don't think they're, I don't think they're a playoff team. I don't think they're in the inner circle like when we've talked about the, the the Ohio States and the Oregons in the Big Ten like that's they're not going to be on that level and just that's just natural look at how much talent they lost right we've kind of had this same conversation with Michigan where it's like look at all the guys that got drafted right and these are premier like that was an all-time offense last year and that's certainly going to be a step back but no they could certainly compete I could see I could see them getting somewhere around you know that eight win range and still being pretty good and going okay they got some hope long term here that Jed Fish is going to build this the right way. Yeah, I think seven and five is probably what I expect for them as of right now. I actually think they're going to start off hot. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Washington in the top 25 at some point because uh, they have a pretty relatively easy first five games. So I think they could start off five and oh. Uh, I think it's certainly possible. But then after that, you got Michigan, you got, you're got at Iowa, you're at Indiana, uh, you're home against USC, you're at Penn State, home against UCLA, and you're at Oregon. So I see. I don't think they're going to beat Michigan. I don't think they're going to beat Iowa. I don't think they're going to beat USC, Penn State, or, or, Penn State or Oregon. Uh, so I think that's five losses. So I think seven and five is possible. So we'll be as bad as a TCU hangover that we saw this past year. But I do think this is not a team that is a top 10 team in the country right now or anything close to that uh, as of right now. I, I would probably go as far as say I don't know if they're even a top 25 team uh, in college football right now. We'll see what we do in our preseason ranking. But, uh, yeah. It's going to be a little bit of a hangover. I, I do have faith in Jed Fish as he makes his way uh, to Washington and as they make their way into the Big Ten, but it's going to take some time to get their feet wet right? with uh, with Jed Fish as their new head coach. So uh, certainly won't be as magical as 2023, but Washington should still be an interesting team to watch in 2024. And again, we are doing this preview for every single one of the 70 Power 4, Power 5 teams uh, heading into 2024. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single one.